here as this was this episode was recorded after the game and Wayne and Mason were there. I was not. I enjoyed it. I could not enjoy a game any more than Maryland's 54 to 10 win over Virginia Tech. The only downside to me is they didn't reach 60. <laughs> And uh, what's his name? Bud Foster and Frank Beamer, wherever you are, I hope you enjoyed this today because today was payback day. And Mike Loxley has to be sitting on top of the world. Let's get to my two guys who were there live and in person on the field and probably had one of their best football days after I don't know how many straight losses on the road. All right. It's on. Well, we, hey, we like driving up 95. Uh, we beat Rutgers a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's right. You're right. Crushed Virginia Tech today, and we're still here. I mean, we're still – we haven't left the, the New York vicinity. Uh, we're putting post-game shows together and looking through all the videos. Mason, it was your first trip to Yankee Stadium. Of course, it wasn't meant to be a football venue, but what was your takeaway of playing in the city? Yeah, it was great. And, you know, after the game, I said – Man, they should really play the lacrosse championship here. And then I was like, well, that's right in the middle of the baseball season, so you can't do that. But really, really good uh, venue to see a game. Now, it's not made for football, so a lot of the seat angles aren't great. The, the press box was a mile away from the field. But, you know, it's really easy to complain about those things when Maryland's beating Virginia Tech 54-10. to 10. Let me give you my thoughts because you guys have expressed them. You can react to them. I talked a lot to you after the game. It's up on Turf Talk or it will be up on Turk Pump very shortly. And to me, uh, no mistakes, hardly at all. All right. Uh, Talia, Talia was beyond good. They were going crazy on TV. And I just thought that that month that Loxley had to work with got this team in the proper mindset of no mistakes, no stupid plays, one, uh, one penalty for unsportsmanlike after we were up 47 to 10, so it didn't matter. Uh, this game, the defensive line was fantastic. Virginia Tech was undermanned, unprepared, not ready for this game. And if they could almost beat Notre Dame, you we can't use that transitory theory, but it just shows you what playing the Big Ten has done for Maryland, even though they've had to suffer those losses every year almost to the Big Four. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm. And why we've been named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. As well as why the Daily Record, Maryland's legal newspaper, has named the Jack Litch Law Group the very best. Best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. Every single lawyer at the Jack Litch Law Group was honored by best lawyers in America. Serving the Jack Litch Law Group was the best decision anyone in my family has ever made, other than my decision to play football at the University of Maryland. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer, get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dog. It, it built it built a much bigger, stronger, more physical team. Basically, you talked about Johnny Jordan, who was Maryland center, transferred to Virginia Tech. He's, yeah, he saw time at Garden Center today, just like he did at Maryland. But he's much smaller than the guys have now. Yeah, and I think one of the things that you got to point to when you look at this game is you can bring out all the Virginia Tech was under man, Virginia Tech was this, Virginia Tech was that. Maryland's had problems beating teams that they should beat 54 to 10 and actually going out there and executing and winning the game 54 to 10. So I think we're seeing steps forward in a lot of places throughout this year of beating the teams you're supposed to beat. Now, they didn't pull anything off crazy this year. I think that's more of a next year on the table, you know, if they beat a Michigan or an Ohio State. But they were had chances, especially late in the season, to do things against Penn State, Michigan State, and they check the boxes. They won the bowl game. They beat Virginia Tech. They beat Rutgers. They have a lot of uh, regional recruiting prowess at this point over Virginia Tech, over Rutgers. And these are teams that 
you got to beat on the recruiting trail and you got to beat them on the field. We well, you know it's amazing. Three of the games they lost this year, they finished at six and seven and six. Three of the games they lost were to teams who were number two or higher at one point during the year, Iowa, Michigan, and Ohio state. I mean, the schedule's insane. They got a rise to it though. And uh, like what's <laughs> happening in lacrosse and other sports in the big 10, the ships have made us rise. We were looking at a team that just looked fantastic today in Maryland. And uh, we have to credit a lot of that to the Big Ten. I can't even think of any drawbacks from this game, Wayne. It was so dominant. Oh, Maryland played really well. They had the longest putt return in the history of the school. Tarheeb still went how far, Mace? 92 yards. So that's a nice way to open it. They Virginia Tech did do everything they could. They executed when the game was fresh and young. Virginia Tech tried to stay in this game. Please tell me. Please say one thing. They stuck. I said it to you when we were up, what was it, 10 to 3 or 7 to 3. I said, one more score, this game's over. And then he threw the 70-yard pass to Daryl Jones. You know, you talk about being short, man. There's no Dante Demas out there. I mean, don't uh, Jay Sean Jones. Uh, Maryland, you know, you talk like we've been healthy all year. No, I, I'm not going for that. We beat this team every way you could beat a team. Oh, we and that's really what I'm trying to get across here is Maryland beat this team. It wasn't that Virginia Tech gave up. Virginia Tech gave it everything they had. They actually were fairly well prepared to play and managed to stay in the game. Maryland just beat the heck out of them. They didn't, could not. This is a lot of what you would say a reversal game. For years, Maryland was the team, the little engine that tried to stay in the game against the big boys. This is one of the few times you can actually see the growth in this program that Maryland was the big boy. Maryland was the team that delivered the hits. Maryland made Virginia Tech non-dimensional. And yeah. that that's great from a coaching standpoint. Maryland out-executed and beat the heck out of them. And one thing you got to look at that this game will show is going into next year, the sheer amount of defensive linemen that Maryland will be able to play come next year. Guys like Andre Porter, I mean, Taichi Johnson didn't even play in this game, which was Maryland's top recruit coming into the class. But next year, Maryland's got 11 defensive linemen that I think can be on the field. Now, Lotez Rogers and Sam Okawani are going to be tough to replace, but they got guys coming up that will fill those spots. Maryland has a chance if they can figure some things out at inside linebacker to be your kind of Washington football team from last year where the secondary is not great, but the quarterbacks that they play just won't have that much time to throw the ball. They've got to find one edge rusher somewhere around here. Maybe it's Cowan or the transfer they have from West Virginia, but Maryland, like you said, it's going to take maybe another year of pass next year when these guys are juniors or in their third year, but they got a lot of guys that are going to deserve time and, and they're getting really, really uh, good results out of this extra month of practice. Deep guy. Hey, we covered... Mason and I were the play-by-play uh, -play in color for the Maryland State All-Star football game the year before COVID. Didn't really mm. play it the past two years. You mentioned that one of the kids that we saw who was the MVP was the kick returner for Virginia Tech? No. No, no, no. Well, one of the kids that we saw, his name's Rex Fleming. He plays special teams for Maryland. Where it's 41. Yeah, and, and they're just starting to find guys. And, and that guy made some plays today. Well, he's made some plays throughout the season, but – Maryland, again, through recruiting, through the high school coaching connections, they're getting like the best player in Maryland, 3A high school football to come to Maryland as a walk-on. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Listen, I, I wondered why Penny Boone left. And then I saw this kid, Middleton. And that's why Penny Boone left. All right. Because this kid, tell me about Middleton, Mason. I mean, this kid, they were going crazy on TV over this guy. Yeah, he's a big running back for Maryland. Uh, he's really like a four-star. He's a four-star recruit, but he's a four-star linebacker recruit. Right. He was dead set on playing running back. Maryland was one of the schools that said, okay, come here. We'll, we'll give you a shot at running back. If you really want to play running back, uh, we'll give you a shot. Now, the backfield looked crowded at the beginning of the season. 
I kind of wondered why we hadn't seen him. I thought we were going to be seeing him at linebacker before we knew it. But give the man the ball and he can he can make something happen. Maryland needs a power back. And one of the things where I felt like they always missed on Penny Boone was giving him the ball in the situations. They gave Littleton the ball today, which is it's third and one. Okay, here comes Antoine Littleton. We're getting that yard. Antoine Littleton's getting the ball. Well, there's trust. He wasn't going to fumble. There were issues with Penny Boone. Yeah, Listen, also, it, look, Loxley, he did it one game this season. You and me asked him, Wayne, uh, why did you abandon the pass after it was successful in the first half? He said, because I wanted to beat them down. I wanted, know, I wanted them to know that we were opposing our will on them. He did that today with the running game in the second half. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He imposed, Maryland imposed its will on that team the way they ran over him, ending with uh, – the running back scoring from 20 yards, which was yeah, like Kobe McDonald should have been taking these, yards. but I loved it. I, I, you know, Cincinnati did it to the Ravens and I don't blame them and I don't blame anybody anymore. If you're not ready to play. You're going to take the pounding. Well, look, the Maryland put in guys that we didn't know who they were on the offensive line. And we were standing in the end zone. They were headed to, but I, I don't even know who's in the game and Maryland just keeps pushing and they were fired up to play yeah. that was as happy and pumped the whole the whole time well credit yeah, and, that, and that last touchdown Wayne just mentioned it the guys on that playing on the offensive line other than Ja'Kai Green from St. Francis they're not on the travel team they're, they I doubt that any of those guys even have been on the road once this year until this point they're, they're the guys that run the scout team in practice um, kind of funny story about that last touchdown. I was taking pictures of the game and I kind of looked up and I'm like, ah, they're not scoring. They're going to run like two more plays. The game's going to be over after that. And I just flipped the camera on to kind of focus on Loxley getting the Gatorade poured on him. And then Maryland scored another touchdown. So I flipped it around. But it was one of those touchdowns that you see scored against Maryland, but Maryland doesn't score much against a team like Virginia Tech. Apparently, Loxley had a special shirt he got from Under Armour to absorb the water. All right. Don't, I'm not making sure. that up. Yeah, huh. he, figuring if he got uh, dumped on. That was what the announcer said. I mean, I, I don't know if they were kidding or whatever, but he didn't uh, even look wet after the game. The, were the announcers, since we were on the field, didn't hear much of the game, we'll go back and watch it uh, tomorrow. But were the announcers fair? Yes, they were blown. First of all, they opened up talking only about Virginia Tech. And then it slowly got to be only about Maryland. What a blowout it was, how great uh, Talia is. And his baby Tua is what they called him. Uh, uh, Booker McFarland on the, on, the, on the network said he's a baby Tua. Listen, it was a great day for Maryland. Anybody out there sees that offense, all right? They got, I mean, it was just special. Guys, you. we're out of time. I got to close it off. But I thank you so much for the great work you did. And, uh, uh, keep it up, and uh, we got a lot of great things. I'm looking forward to next season already. They're already they're already pushing season tickets, Wayne. That's yeah, I saw that too, Bruce. Already, they it should, didn't take long. They should wide receiver you is what's being referred to. The Maryland wide receiver room is going to be spectacular, and they have the four to five star quarterback to go along with it. And of course, Leah was the MVP of the game and we caught up with his parents holding the trophy and the ball after All the I game. can say is check out the post game. This is the post post game guys. Thanks so much. We'll be back in a few minutes.